Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit. This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. Your physical body is the quickest access to power, sister quickest access to power. Your ability to push yourself physically exposes emotionally what's happening beneath it and inside of you. Your core, your essence, your soul, who you are. Why do you think that when you know people are part of a movement, let's let's say CrossFit for example. Great Glassman created CrossFit. It was pretty fucking brilliant. I don't know if he like kind of saw this or it just kind of came out this way became this way but CrossFit became CrossFit in the like crazy movement I was involved in CrossFit at the very beginning um back in let me see I think it was 2000 2008 yeah 2008 um the box that I was at was called CrossFit Edmonton it was actually in St. Albert but CrossFit Edmonton and uh they were one of the first CrossFit boxes in western Canada Greg Glassman um, actually came to visit with like some of the CrossFit cronies at the time and uh, CrossFit started out of a like a garage gym in Santa Cruz California and was this real had this real kind of like rebel feel to it like it's very much an us against them us as in we were the rebels them as like the global gym all the traditional shit doing three sets of 12 like all the bullshit stuff in fitness that gets you nowhere and um, the thing with that Glassman again knew or didn't know is that when you sweat with people, other people, and sometimes bleed from doing pull-ups and creating blisters that pop and, you know, the, the, the insane intensity, which is, which is beautiful in the way that it is with CrossFit, but what that does to you is it bonds and connects you to other people and it bonds and connects you to who you are. This is why people will talk about, like, you know, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, right? The CrossFit Kool-Aid. Um, this is my church. This is you know, I talk about even on my boxing gym, like I'm going to church, right? There is a spiritual experience that you can have when you push yourself physically to access emotionally, to expose that, to get down to the spiritual core and essence that is you, sister. And I know for some of you, you know, you're kind of like, maybe listen, so you're like, Karen's up for fucking rocker, like, you know, I know you train hard and you have muscles, you've been lifting forever, like, yeah, but I would have heard the stories, right? But, and if you haven't had this experience, I get it. It can sound kind of like, I don't know, cultish. You're like, whatever, it's just movement. But like, it's not, it's not. So I was reminded of this today when I was at the gym. So I'm coming off an injury. I have not trained for a couple of weeks and, uh, and it's still not totally there. Like my ankle's still like a little bit swollen. I can feel it in my boxing boot. Boxing boot is like, it's like a flat, it's like flat at the bottom. It's called a boot because it's like, it's like a high top shoe, right? And so it's around my ankle and kind of towards the end when we stopped a lot of movement, I'm doing bag work and then we're going to do some conditioning work. I'm like, I got to take my boots off because I could feel my ankle was like hot and it's getting like a little swollen from being constricted in that like tight boot because you have to have your shoes really tight when you're boxing those shoes. And, um, and I'm on the bag and I've had this, you know, in my head, actually the last podcast I talked about this saying, wondering if like, am I maybe done boxing? Like, I fucking love boxing. It has been, it has created power in me and the things that I've been able to push my body to do that I never thought possible. Now, I've decided that competition is out. It's so interesting, too. So this would have been the third tournament, which actually would be, as I record this, it would be, this is a Thursday. It's actually on Saturday, right? But when this happened again and I was in the emergency and my leg's swollen and they're going like, it, this is a blood clot, you're going to be on thinners, you can't do contact sports, like, oh, by the way, you can still get a pulmonary embolism and like, bye-bye and like, it was fucking heavy going through all that stuff. Heavy physically, more so heavily mentally, emotionally, emotionally, very much emotionally. So I started to wonder, I'm like, I'm like, I'm literally, like, I've never had an injury in my life outside of I sprained my ankle training for a half marathon back in like... Oh, when was that? 2008? Actually, I think it started CrossFit in 2006. Yeah, 2006. 2006. 2008 was running a half marathon. And uh, about three weeks out, I sprained it. I was able to kind of like, it get well enough that I could still, I still ran on it and I finished and everything. But outside of that, literally, I've had no injuries like this ever before. 
I've hit my shins on a box jump, missing a box jump. If you know CrossFit, you know the fucking pain that that is. But, you know, it didn't stop me from doing things. And it certainly wasn't like a, you know, my legs swelling up. And it literally feels like my skin's going to explode off of muscles and bones. Like pain, 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 swollen. My my foot was almost like, um, if you either have children or you don't, you know, like kids' feet. Even my four-year-old's still like this. They're just little little pudgy. They're so cute. Little pudgy little fat feet. I call them little hobbit feet. And like normally in me, like I can see like tendons and ligaments in my feet and, and, and also too, cause I'm, I'm fairly strong. And so you see that and you see that, you see the veins and stuff in my feet. And it was just like, like my little, like my little four-year-old Kai's like little pudgy feet. That was my foot. Like just fat, thick. And um, so I'm getting this injury after injury after injury. And I'm like, what am I trying to hear from this message? And you know what the crazy shit is? I look at, so I've still been on, so check this out. I'm still on like the mailing list for this tournament, right? They know that I'm not competing and I've been injured and I'm out. But I'm still on the mailing list where it's like, hey, it's three days out. Hey, it's this. And and I got one yesterday, which is like, hey, here's the heat. So it was a tournament it's a tournament so it means that you know you have some people that are in your category so I was in the woman's novice boxing and um and then you can see who your opponents are what gyms that they're that they're training at and uh yeah and you'll see and so maybe there's one opponent which would be really rare but maybe there's two or three maybe there's six right and so it's like a round robin kind of thing right you fight someone whoever wins that fight fights the next person and depending how many people right how that goes so I'm looking at it I'm like where's the female boxing guess what there's nobody <laughs> like it's exactly the same when I first went to compete back in October this was the situation there was no opponents for me there was nobody competing in my category the female boxing at least out here is not that big kickboxing's bigger but even boxing there's only there's only two in female kickboxing and one of the girls is at my gym so Rob was telling me so I mean they'll go three rounds it'll kind of be like a like a match right like a boxing like three rounds um, and it's like whoever you know two to three, right? And if whoever, someone wins the first two, then like, then it's done. But, um, so I never would have had an opponent, even if this injury came up, same thing, like no opponent. It's like, how many times do I need to get messages from the universe saying like, you you know, and as my friend very astutely said to me through this whole process is like, Karen, maybe you don't need to show up to the fight anymore. And she meant it as in the fight, but I also see it as in like, I, everything I needed to get and I'm getting doesn't involve competing. And it's a hard thing for me to say because there's a piece of me that kind of goes like, mm, that sounds like a pussy excuse to me. Like, oh, see, the universe is direct to me, blah, blah, blah. Like, like an excuse or a reason as to why not. But I know. I feel it. I feel it inside of me. So the same thing when this first injury happened. No, sorry. When, the, when I first, actually, I'm sorry. When the first tournament happened and there was no opponent, I couldn't compete. I'm like, no problem. Give me time to train for the next one. The next one was February. Eight days out. Eight days, nine days out. I re-injured that. What I thought was a torn hamstring. Now I know is a Baker cyst behind my knee that has, you know, radiated to hamstring and caused pain there. Like significant pain. Like I couldn't walk. I'm hobbling around. I mean, I got kids, man. Like there is no, like, nobody feels in for me, right? Like my husband needs to do his business. I need to be with my troll. Like he was helping out with stuff, but still it was, you know, and then, then, it, then I'm like, okay. It was like day later was better. Two days was significantly better. I'm like, okay. Went to the gym to train on that second day out. Like, took it really light. I'm like, you know what? I can still do this. I can still do this. It's a, it's a two minute round. I'm like, at best, there probably will be two opponents. At best, would be that I'm either, I'm either going to be like, I'm either going to be in two, two rounds, two minute rounds, or three. So the most I have to kind of be in the ring is like six minutes. Like, no problem. I got this. Right. I got this. And, and then again, it's, you know, this happened. And then again, no opponent, even though there's the injury. Like, maybe you don't have to show up to the fight anymore, Karen. Maybe I don't have to show up to the fight anymore. However, however, sidetracked in this conversation, I have then thought, I'm like, maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this at all. You know? And so as I'm training today, and it's hard, a couple weeks out, a lot of emotional stuff. Emotional, you know, it's emotional stuff that you go through. It's exhausting, Right? takes a lot of energy. I feel really drained. I feel like my confidence is really low. I feel like it's translating to other parts of my life. Like it's not even just the physical stuff. It's like it's opened up this Pandora's box of shit. Shit that needs to happen. Shit that I trust and surrender to it. 
that still sucks. Like, it still sucks. And um, so as I'm getting back and I'm feeling my confidence is, like, really shaky. And Rob and I did a, a drill today that was kind of like you're, like, punching back and forth. But you're just kind of in, in um, like, you're holding your fists up over your forehead, if you can imagine. So with boxing gloves. And you're, like, protecting yourself, right? So if someone's on the attack and you need to defend yourself, right? Like, that's a way you can kind of, like, go into, like, almost like a little shell. And you take the punches, right? But they're not to your face, or you can, someone comes to go like take a rib shot, like you, you drop your elbow down and so you're protecting into there, right? Like, so it was just a back and forth. It was really light, but I could start to feel myself go in this place where I'm like, do I still want to be doing this? Like, do I still want to do it? And then I'm on the bag and I'm like, my shoulders fucking are like screaming. They hurt so fucking bad. Somewhat being deconditioned for a couple of weeks and like a lot of the emotional stuff too. Like mindset works both, both ways, right? It can sink you and it can fucking, it can lift you. And because where I've been in my head and where I was standing at that heavy bag, it was sinking me. And, uh, and I can start to feel like tears coming to the surface, right? Where I'm just, I'm pushing so fucking hard. And normally I would go to that place and inside my head, I'm literally telling myself, Karen, you can do more. Like keep on going. Like fuck yes. Like I got this. Like that literally is the talk inside my head. Not this time. I was like, you can't do this. You're fucking weak. Um, just stop. Right? And I realized that as I got through it, there were just minute and a half rounds, there were shorter rounds, but as I got through the training today with Rob, and then we did battle ropes at the end, and I'm like, yep, I'm getting back in a place of power inside my body again. It's going to look however it needs to look, and I just, I trust it but I understand that what I'm feeling right now is not a, well, maybe I shouldn't do this anymore. It's just that things are just so fucking raw for me. And, and it's a beautiful thing. And I'm glad that I went today and I, you know, feel a little bit kind of better afterwards, right? A little bit more energy, a little bit more clear, a little bit more lucid, fluid. It's the word that comes to mind that I think of. And, uh, physical is the fastest way to power sister like you can't think it you can't do the work to get yourself into power in my opinion do a positive shift to see the lesson all important things all necessary things but if you don't have the physical power and you try to overlay emotional stuff or you know mental like mindset tools on top of that mm -mm. no your body will sink you and you need to have your body uplift you to lift you. Lift you. Keep you going. Mm-hmm. Because if you were tired and exhausted, you know, the reason that this is actually healed, considering pretty well, considering I was in emergency two weeks ago. Two weeks ago today, as I record this, it was like, you have a blood clot. Come back the next day when the ultrasound department's open and we're going to do a scan and see, but we know we're going to find a blood clot because it's, it's like, looks exactly like a blood, blood clot. So here's your more tip for you today with this sister is like, what do you need to do to get yourself in a state of physical power? I don't care how you do it. Listen, it, it can be however it looks for you. It could be that you do yoga. You do something that, you know, it's really aligned with who you are. It could be that you, oh gosh, I don't know, you run, you walk, you, uh, you get out in the ocean, depending on what part of the world that you live in. Like you need to do something on a regular basis, you swim, get in the pool to bring yourself into physical power. Because if you want power in your life and you're wondering maybe why you can also can't access some of the emotional stuff, like you've been telling yourself lies for so fucking long, you don't even know that they're there. Believe me, you push yourself physically, the emotional stuff will come out. It will come out. It will come out. Guaranteed. So, sister, that is your more tip. You just gotta like recognize like, what do I need to do? And put a plan into place, like that's it. That's it. It's probably not as complicated as you're making it out to be. But you simply fucking make it work. That's all. So finishing up, I want you to make sure you subscribe to the newsletter. Head over to drkarenosmer.com slash action guide. I'm going to send you my more for action guide, which is how to start your day in power and two trainings, which help you remember who you are, how to drop your stories and create new ones. So that's number one. Number two, you need to be in the sisterhood. 
Like, enough of the fucking excuses. Enough of you thinking that you're doing this all alone, that there's nobody like you. There are women like you from all over the world that are inside the sisterhood that want some of these same things. I want to learn how to access power. So I want you to head over to drkarenosman.com slash sisterhood, and you get to sign up for the first seven days for free. That is my gift to you. And number three, make sure to subscribe to this podcast, sister. That way you will not miss a single episode. Be delivered directly to your phone. And I want you to go ahead and leave a review, a five-star review, and help me help other women. So they will see that review and your words have the potential to transform another woman's life. So I will talk in the next episode, sister. A life of more is just one step away from you doing the fucking work every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the how to get more tip, subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com newsletter.